Hi, so today I'm going to be going over uh, this particular drawing. Um, the artist who did this asked me for a little bit of advice on um, her perspective. Um, I'm not 100% sure that perspective is necessarily the problem. I mean, there is perspective problems, sure. But um, I think there's a little bit more to uh, this than perspective at the moment. Now, um, but I'm, I'm going to really quickly give some tips on how uh, you can approach a drawing like this uh, with an environment. It's going to be very, very rough. I'm not planning. This is meant this particular drawing is kind of a bit of a thumbnail rough, just putting in shapes, that sort of thing. It's not meant to be a finished drawing. Um, this is just kind of an idea sketch of uh, breaking up the space, trying to come up with a composition, that sort of thing. And that's kind of what I'm going to do. I'm just going to really quickly sketch out something rough uh, using this as my uh, jumping off point and give out as much perspective tips and a bunch of uh, design tips as I can um, just to uh, help uh, bring some kind of uh, just to help uh, this kind of thing uh, come together a little bit better. Hi my name is Luis Escobar. I'm a storyboard artist on the Simpsons television show. i am been working on the show for well over 20 years and uh, I've, I've uh, worked uh, with perspective quite a bit. Uh, but some of the advice that I'm going to give you came from a concept artist, uh, concept art um, class that I took many, 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 many years ago. Okay, so one of the things that I wanted to talk about specifically here, um, she's already got a horizon line. And uh, she was wondering if uh, this is where the horizon line should be, what you know, that sort of thing. And I, and I totally understand. And I highly recommend that you do, when you are approaching something um, like this, uh, do exactly what she did, which was basically she drew her sketch out and then she put the horizon line and perspective lines and all that sort of thing in. However, uh, one of the problems with doing that on a naturalistic environment is that uh, it's a little bit more difficult to really work with perspective. Um, if, if anything, uh, unless you're talking about specifically this kind of castle, fortress, whatever it is, um, with natural environments, uh, horizon line is really just about all you need um, because what ends up happening is that there are so many hills and valleys and things like that that um, that it kind of negates the whole horizon line perspective vanishing points thing. Um, it's not that it's not helpful having, but 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 the horizon line is really the key. Now, if you don't know anything about horizon line, the horizon line is actually uh, your eye line, where your eye actually. Um, where your eye or your camera is. So for example, really fast, say this is your horizon line. Your eye oops, as the viewer is crossing the horizon, the horizon line is crossing your eye, okay? So whatever you see, that's where the horizon line is. Or, in this case, you could also have a camera from the 1970s. Let's get those little flash blocky thingy things. And um, that's also where the horizon line is. It's wherever the camera is or wherever your eye line is. Okay, so that's what it is. In other words, if you were to take the, the analogy I give in the drawing website, 
when I talk about this is um, here let me bring this up okay uh, is that uh, imagine your world is uh, filled with water all the way up to your eyeballs so um, you know here's Bloop, 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 and then there's a fish uh, swimming by. Okay, so we've got uh, this is the water, and this is dry. Okay? So anything that you see from your point of view, say that there's glass right in front of you and the water line is coming right across your eye line. Anything above the horizon line, you're looking up at. You're looking up into the sky. Anything under the water, you're looking down at. You're looking down on the objects inside. Okay? So it's a good idea to just have that in mind. Now in the case of the drawing here, Having the horizon line here is kind of is okay to have it here. Actually, it's not. At first, when I first was going to talk about it, I was going to say, "No, you got to put the horizon line up here because it's a, no." You know what it what this does is it makes it so that when we we as the viewer are looking into this and we're looking up, and this stuff is on a hill. It's just going up a hill. That's what it ends up uh, feeling like. The problem is that uh, we don't quite know how big these elements are. Like the, the mountains, if they are enormous, if they're miles and miles and miles away, we first of all, um, the ambient uh, the, the, the just the, the as objects recede in space, the, the 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 less we see of them, the less details we see of them, they become more and more vague. So they start falling further into space. Um, and then this thing is as gigantic as the mountains. Is it made out of the mountains? If that's the case, then this hole, being this much of a mountain, is miles and miles and miles and miles and miles high. It's almost as it's as big as this mountain. Do you see? So this is almost this hole is as big as this mountain. So it's as big as a mountain, which is you know uh, you could create a fantastic structure made out of a mountain that has just and that's and that's fine. But then this road is enormous. Do you see how enormous this road is? Is it meant to lead into it? So this is as big as a mountain. So there's a there's a few things. This road goes off into space, and this is as big as a mountain. Um, there's there's scale issues here. So I think this is part of the problem with the picture is that there's really generally scale issues. Now, uh, when asked if she used any reference, she told me that she used this as reference. Look at, look at, see how this is receding in space because here's everything is dark, and the further things go, the lighter they become because the atmosphere makes things lighter. Now, I'm assuming that she's probably used some of these mountains here. I don't recommend. Uh, while I do recommend when making a master study, which this is the picture that she used to make a master study. When making a master study, um, I highly recommend you copy the master study and you copy what the master did so that you can learn how to do it yourself. However, I do not recommend that you therefore then take elements from the master study and put it into yours. Better to learn what they did and how they approached something than to just copy it and put it into yours. What I do recommend is going off and looking up reference of your own. And so that you could at least look at what the real thing looks like. And then you could even more readily or more um, 
you're more likely to understand and appreciate what the master did and how they did it. So that you could look at, uh, the, you know, real mountains and then look at your master study and then see how they interpreted real mountains. Okay? Okay, so... We've got this drawing here, and I'm not exactly sure. And then here's we got this thing, and it's really vague too. Now I'm not sure if this needs, and and that's another thing. If you're going to start creating stuff from your imagination, it needs to at least be based in some way in reality. So again, I highly recommend you go in and do some homework by looking up structures that might be of the type that you can use do you see so how would I approach something like this well first of all um, I would have to add more something here because I'm not exactly sure what any of this stuff is I don't know what this is. Is this desert? Is this a plain? Is this a grassland? Uh, is there forest? I, I, what is this? Is this volcanic sand? I don't know what this is. I don't know. All I know is that this is supposed to be a road and that there's some kind of structure and then there's mountains. Do you see? So. I'm not sure it, it, what any of this stuff is. Um, if you look at the reference and if you're trying to make it look like it's grass, then what does grass look like? If there, it is grass, then look, there's shrubs in it. There's um, little patches of dirt. There's forest and uh, rocks so um, same here as rocks grass forest this is more of a plain but there's forest over here and there's you know little cliff sides with the rocks here and see how there's like cliffs and things like that and then here's a road and here's a little house. And there's a little house. So we could actually check to see how gigantic this road is compared to the little houses. There's a fence. And there's a per there's, Look, there's people in here. So... Same thing here. We've got shrubs. You get the idea. So, because it, it's like, it, it's, I, I really don't like this photo. It looks like it's been, I'm going to turn that off because I don't like it. Okay, um, lake, the houses. So, so, there's a river. What I'm getting at is that this is this guy has no there's no reference here there's no um you didn't look he, she didn't look at anything uh so there's nothing it, it doesn't feel like it's any place so how what what can we do well how can we fix this well first of all we start with the reference right so Again, one my 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 first tip is get reference. Let's make uh you know based on reality. Okay? It's very important 
Also, make sure that you understand how far things are. So perspective is really very simple. You just, the closer something is, the bigger it is. The further away, the smaller it is. Keep this in mind. Make sure I, what you want to do when you're creating something that's supposed to be far into the distance is uh, maybe just draw a little person. So I would say draw a size guide. So what do I mean, mean by a size guide? A size guide is um, how big a person is to whatever it is that you're going to be drawing. So remember these, so, uh, you know, you've got the little houses in that one reference. That You've got these little houses actually, like this one. It's got like little houses and then we actually got to see the little people in here. Well, you need to draw the little people to see how big what you're drawing is have some kind of size guide what are you how big is something if this is so big that your guy is so tiny do, do you see what i'm saying like how big is this is it supposed to be miles and miles and miles long i don't know i don't know um this road is it supposed to be a road for people to travel to this place if that is the case this is an enormous road if this is the size of a mountain So, it, let me, let me, maybe, let me look at something. Now, there's a movie, Lord of the Rings. We have that scene, this one. Well, we've got this massive structure with these giant... Uh, statues here. We've got here's the the mountains, the, the statues, and we have the size reference of the people. So we know how humongous these things are because of the size of the people. Okay. Let's see if we can find a painting. So there's a painting, here's another painting, another painting. So we've got these giant naturalistic looking things. We have scale, okay? Now, uh, it looks like you're doing something that's supposed to look like Minas Morgul. Take a look at this. So we've got this um, giant structure also carved out of the mountain. So again, it's all about scale. It's all about how big something is. These structures are as big as mountains. Minas Morgul is carved out of a mountain. So look at how this is done. Carved out of a mountain. Okay? It would have to be something like this, only even more enormous, if this is what you're trying to do. And the only way to get that kind of scale is not only to create a mountain, then just kind of start building teeny tiny little things off of it. And it, and it would be too tiny to actually see. 
So I'm assuming that maybe this is not meant to be carved out of a mountain. Maybe this is supposed to be a structure that's not that's not coming out of a mountain. Okay, so draw a size relationship. Try to create something that you can put a people in here, and 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 that's and that's very important. Um, you can you can look here and you can see that maybe people you could probably see how about the size of the people where they would have to be to be able to walk around in something like this okay so um, draw size guide and uh, design your space Uh, try not to just go, okay, I'm going to draw a line here, and that's it. Um, this doesn't, this, this is really not an environment that, that's interesting at all. You're not breaking up the space in any way. You have to design your space. So, really quickly, I'm going to rough something out. It's not going to look beautiful. This is not the point. The point is that I'm going to try to come up show you what I'm doing here with these three um, tips. I'm going to call this tips so I could always come back to them here. Reference. Find something based on reality. Draw a size guide and design your space. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take some of this reference beginning with this and this I kind of like kind of like this and I do like the other one too I like this Kind of interesting zoomed in. It's a beautiful picture. Um, yeah, I'm going to do this. So I'm going to grab this and I'm going to move it over here to my other screen. And I'm definitely going to use this as reference here. I really look, do like that photo. Okay. And... Um, Let's see. Where to begin? Um, well, we know that... Okay, so I'm assuming... Uh, here's another thing. I'm assuming that uh, this is the center of interest. So the other thing I'm going to do is say... Be clear about your center of interest. Ah, great.
Okay, turn these off. Um, if this is your center of interest, let's not have it all the way on the edge of the picture plane so it looks like it's going to fall out of this. It's really uncomfortable. It doesn't feel like... What's the point of having it near the edge and having it like fall off? Let's like have it so that it's at least in the picture. So let's say that this is going to be our focus here. This is our center of interest. This is the castle. So here's the... I'm just going to put in a block. Okay. And just based off of uh, a reference... I'm just going to start putting in shapes and rhythms. Just break up the space. Things flow from one thing to the other. This is or a little bit or you know, trying to be organic. Very lightly very lightly put in mountains in the back. Because the atmosphere, the further something is, the, sl the softer it gets, you know. So we've got all these shapes happening here. And maybe this is too big. Maybe this would be the, like, the top of the spire or something. Now, how big is a person? That's one we have to figure out. So, like, let's say how big is a person... That big. That's how big the person was. Actually, you know what? Let's make him. Like a red. There we go. So that little guy is red. There we go. That's how we know how big this person is. So that person's a dot. Um. That means that if there's a entrance to a door, that's about as big as it's going to get. So I think we can make the castle kind of big. If we want to make it uh, epic. So already you can see that um, it's a little bit more interesting. We can start working with the topography of this environment. We can say that this, you know, there's a hill here. So this is where the perspective, is, you know, um, 
it's not exactly perspective so much as creating a real environment like like as if you're sculpting the environment how like like you're doing a 3d graphic image so that you know what's going on here And this photo, I'm telling you, this photo, I'm actually looking at it now and I'm trying to emulate pieces of it because it's very helpful. I do not do nearly enough um, nature studies. If I did a lot of nature studies, this would be much easier because I'd be familiar with this kind of terrain and what it does. But this is very, very helpful if you don't, if you're not familiar with this sort of thing, then the reference is very, very handy. Then you can start doing things like this is a forest. Just put little spines here. This is all forest. So just indication of forest here. Indication of forest here. Forest, forest, <sighs> you know, um, you can have the road. You can have another piece of road. Maybe one peeking out from here. So there's like a lot, there's a lot of stuff going on here you can do. There's a road going into that. This could be very very choppy, stony, cliff stuff. Okay, none of this is perfect. This is cool because it's pointing. Let's let's have this stuff point to our center of interest. This road is already pointing. This is already pointing in here in this direction. What else can we do that points? We could add rocks. They're all kind of 
conveniently pointing in this direction. So that sort of thing, you know, here we go. And then um, let me change my reference. I'm going to look at some of the castles that I've got. Let me l use this. So, yeah, so this is rough so far, and let's see. Let me just create the shapes. So this has, my reference has um, kind of like a an arch around the doorway and two spires. Which is kind of cool. And uh, kind of a tower that comes forward. And then these arches here. It has arches that come. To kind of do this. Seems to be a um, some kind of a chapel or something here. Then maybe there's like a little stuff going on over here. And then there's a tower that kind of pops up like this. Then maybe more little windows. Maybe there's a big building here. Some more spires and arches, I should say. There's maybe like a little itty bitty, because remember, this is how big we're looking. There's like a little veranda here, maybe. And these should be fairly small so that people can look over the turrets. Another small door here. Arches. Look over the turrets. Turrets. So, breaking up the space a little bit more. So, do you see what I'm saying here when I'm talking about this stuff? Where I, I, I say that, um, that you need to reference, it has to be referenced from reality. You, you should draw a size guide. You should have like at least a... Of, you know, an idea as to where, what, how big um, a person is, like a scale, you know. Think about how big a person would look like next to whatever it is that you're drawing. Design your, the space, break up the picture plane so that it isn't just 
one line and that's it you know you just especially when you're doing something like nature where there's rhythms and things that just kind of push and pull and yank and move around and um, and also and, and be clear about your center of interest so whatever your center of interest is um, yeah sure like have the stuff all around point to where you're going um, you're gonna be able to do that with tone value all this other stuff but just when you're just designing the space in and of it, the, you, you, just by itself, um, it, it really should just be things just converge into where you want it to go. Like just this stuff. So like I, I'm, I have a bunch of lines here and I guess it looks really busy, but this is just my guide and this is just a rough. Eventually, what you're going to do is you're going to get rid of all these little lines and stuff like that. And then you're go what you're going to end up doing is probably like lighting this better, putting the, most of the contrast with the values and all these things going into here. All this other stuff is going to just get blurrier and blurrier. And, um, and, and the rhythms of the, of the drawing, just what you're going to be hinting at is you're going to be if there's going to be any kind of like darks and like accents, they'd probably be at, in areas that end up eventually just pointing to this area uh, because this is the center of interest. So uh, make sure that you know how big things are. If this is still the guy on the road, it'd still be teeny tiny. This guy in the road would still be fairly small, although bigger. Be a little bit bigger now in here, but still. I mean, this is, you know, that's kind of what you have to be thinking about, the scale. Um, so I hope, I hope this gives you a little bit more uh, food for thought of what you ought to think about when you are designing a space like this. Um, I didn't talk about the value structures in your drawing and any of that stuff. However, I can talk to you about value if you want me to talk about value and all these other things. But um, in this case, in this particular case, this is what you really kind of want to be talking, uh, thinking about when you're just creating something like this is um, You're thinking about breaking up the space. You're thinking about finding the ref reference so that you can make something that you do look naturalistic. Um, and you're, think you're thinking about uh, si the size guide and uh, be clear about your center of interest. This uh, ended up not necessarily being so much about uh, your perspective as much as your design of the space and coming up with things to to make uh, your uh, imaginative drawings seem more naturalistic um, if anything the perspective would come in here and we'd want to work this out and then we'd probably put the horizon line somewhere around here because this is more like a helicopter shot we're looking down at the we're like on a helicopter looking down at the landscape and we're seeing this giant structure um, like this monolith of a giant castle so we'd put probably if anything we'd probably put the horizon line here about here and then you can you know vanishing points and things like that in case you were curious as to where you would put the horizon line in something like this you would think that you were on a helicopter okay 
So, um, I, again, I hope this has been helpful. I hope that this is um, gives you some food for thought about when uh, what to do when you're approaching a drawing like this. And, um, yeah, um, if you're watching this and you want to ask me a question about drawing of any kind, um, let me know. Just uh, send me a... Uh, a message, uh, put a comment on the video, whatever it is, and uh, and I will uh, do my best to answer it. Um, also, if uh, you want to support me and um, you want to see more videos like this, um, it really does help if you become, if you uh, support me on on Patreon. I have a Patreon page that is uh, you can you can find it here. Just follow the link, and you will get early videos. And um, I'm I'm going to be changing uh, a little a few of the rewards soon, but um, but hopefully, uh, yeah, you could you could get portraits uh, drawn from uh, by me of you, and then lots of different things. But you'll get the videos early before anybody else, and you'll also get the PDFs or the the, the PSDs of this. Um, this artwork as well as many of the other artwork that I've been doing over the weeks or the months there's a lot of artwork there that you can download either uh, high-res JPEGs or uh, PSDs and um, and I'd uh, really appreciate your support thank you so much and I'll see you next time alright bye <laughs>